Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dimensions of the Supernatural. I am Maureen Grudzinski, otherwise known as a little witchy, and I'm here with my great co-host, Anthony Simonelli, otherwise known as Mr. Forget About It. Forget about it. Forget <laughs> about it. I gotta say it the right way, huh? <laughs> so how is everyone today? It is a dreary day here in Pennsylvania. Anthony, how is it there? It's nice. I was outside without a jacket today, so it wasn't bad. A little chilly if you're going to dom the, you know, um, the shaded area. But I, I like wearing no jacket. Can't wait till all that happens again. Yeah, mm. I'm uh, in sweatpants and a hoodie as usual. <laughs> it's like my own typical attire. Yeah. So we already have some comments coming in. Hello, everyone. How are we today? Um. We are still waiting for our guest today, Hello. hopefully. We're hoping he remembers. I did send a reminder. We have Richard Lale Lillard. And if you don't know who that is, you will never forget him after you see him today. Yes, for sure. <laughs> he was a guest and featured on Ghost Adventures. Um, I... I there's so much to say. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. He's Victorian Gothic. He is a tarot card reader. Um, he teaches at University Magicus. Um, Clairvoyant to psychic medium. You know. Yes, 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 yes. He lives in New Orleans. Um, he has been on a psychic trek across Europe and the United States. Um, he's stunning to look at. I mean, impeccable clothing. Yes. I mean, what very well dressed. He's a gentleman. He is. He a is the psychic. psychic. Gentleman psychic. Gentleman psychic. So as we're waiting for him, uh, Anybody have questions in the comments? Anybody mm -hmm. know that we were having him on here today? Yes, wow, an intro. I don't even know who's talking to us through Facebook. Yeah, I'm trying that to find me. a person. Wow. Do you want to tell us who you are, or do you want to stay as uh, mysterious as Richard Lale is? <laughs> uh, the Facebook user, um, if you don't um, register your name. Oh, it's Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. You know, I registered on Facebook. What happened, Jenny? Of all people. Sorry, it's Jenny. I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, that is quite an intro. He, I mean, I can't say enough about him. He's he's literally like one of the coolest people I've ever seen. And I have been dying to have him on our show. And he was so gracious to be with us and of course we changed times for him um to work around his schedule so i'm i apologize that we're not on at 7 30 tonight um eastern standard time of course so um so well, why are we waiting um are you up to anything these days or you know i'm um, doing anything with the i mean if he's we gotta wait so um, I started another podcast. We do it every other week. Um, I'm working with Haiti and it's called Enchanting Views and Mystic Brews. It was on last night. Uh, we make a little potion. We uh, teach a spell. We talk about witchcraft and we tell a little bit of history. It's a really interesting show. And if anybody wants to see it, um, it's under the beyond the boundaries of the paranormal. Um, although I try to share it on my channel as well. So if anybody wants to watch that, it's, it's really interesting. And, and we had a really good time last night. Um, we didn't do the potion, uh, because hey, Haiti forgot she, but she did drink wine. So. <laughs> Haiti drinking wine. Aww. Yeah. And I did a, a spell on, uh, binding, and freezers. 
So the freezer spell and binding spell. Hello, whoever you guys are. I'm trying to bring that up. Hmm. It's not coming up. Facebook use and stuff. We got people on Facebook. I think that's where most people come in. Yeah. So I'm not sure which one. I'm going to all the secrets, all the uh, different um, Facebook pages we've been doing. All right. But so, yeah, um, we're doing, um, I'm doing a couple of investigations um, with groups. I think they're, well, let me get the name of this place. It, they're free, 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 Freeling Heisen. Freeling Heisen, yes. There you yeah. go. I'll always help you with that. Fling, yeah, Fling and Heisen. <laughs> <laughs> what are you flinging around? Fling and Heisen. Yeah. Well, we're doing it on the 13th. And if anybody's interested, that's in um, Morristown, New Jersey. And there's still tickets for sale. I think we have like seven tickets for sale. Um, if anybody wants to buy, um, it's, it's going to be an awesome, um, awesome place to uh, do. We did it. Uh, we we actually did a private um, investigation there, and it was nice. It was really really wild place, um, and it, uh, we we got so much that we did static com. We did a bunch of stuff there while we were there. And a lot of stuff came through. So we're going to be there on, on the 13th of this month. Still selling tickets. Anybody's interested. Um, of course, Jenny Colucci, my partner there, is going to be there. Ron Lourdes, Ron Gonzalez, and uh, Lourdes. Ron Gonzalez, Amy. Oh, that's his last name now? Yeah. I, I can't <laughs> mind him. It saves me time. <laughs> Ron Yacovetti and Lourdes Gonzalez. Uh, Richard Marcella. Um, who else is going? Jenny, who else is going to be there? Um, I know Kim Gaius. Guy. Does that does that literally help when you like look inside the computer? Does, yeah. Is she in there talking for you? Yeah, I I, I I get closer because you know the old old man's <laughs> eyes aren't there anymore, so everything is uh, you know. Oh yeah, Lisa and uh, Nicole from Full Moon Paranormal is going to be there too, so it should be good. Uh, like I said, they have some more, seven more tickets to sell if anybody's interested. And then we have the 26th, April 26th. We're doing the, um, the, what was it, the public house. And that's, where's that? That's upstate somewhere, I think. Oh, I'm looking through my stuff here. Oh, it's in Chester, New Jersey. And, um... That's a good event because they're actually serving dinner. It's called the Public House. Um, it's, it's also the Steakhouse. So they're giving a dinner. The people are going to come. They got a dinner. They do this different, um, you know, um, different, um, like, you know, you could get tickets for, for dinner or just to investigation or dinner and investigation. And then also you can stay overnight. They got a place there, too. Um, I got the phone number for that. That's 908-955-7911. So if anybody wants to come with that night, that's going to be an awesome time. We should have a good time that night. I like you steak. Know? Steak is always good. Steak. I, I like my steak with a little pulse. You know, you know, people like it rare. I still like a little blood going through it. You know. I like my medium rare. <laughs> yeah. So we should have a good time. Um, and, you know, we always have a good time when we get out there. So those two events that, um, you know, they, whatever money goes to the place and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. So if anybody wants to join us, we'll be ready. You know, and you can I'm always here for that. You know. Come to see us live, and you, know, and you get to hear me say this live. <laughs> and there might be a cannoli in it for you too. You know what I'm saying? That would be good. Yeah. Cannolis are always good. So, um, 
So that's what's going on. I mean, event-wise, still getting ready for, you know, the Paracons. Mm. Lots of Paracons coming up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to Penhurst, aren't you? I was thinking about it. Yeah, the Penhurst one should be good. That one's in what, May? Uh, yes. Penhurst. And Jenny said, and then 511, you have the White Hill Mansion Paracon and Burlington. Oh, Prison. yeah. Yeah. Um, that's uh, May 11th. The White Hill, White Hill Mansion has a Paracon. Um, and um, I mean, up with Jenny there to check, you know, check that out. And then after that, um, Parasite, um, Parasite Paranormal is um, doing the Burlington Prison. So they asked me if I come along. I said, sure, I'd love to. So I love the Burlington Prison. You ever, you ever do that one in uh, Mount Holly, New York? Uh, Mount no, Holly, New there. Jersey. That, it's a very small place. It's a small prison. It's three, like three floor. Uh, well, it's two floor. First floor, second floor. You got a basement, and there's some good history there. Um, well, somebody was murdered there also, but it's a. They got a debtor. But you, if you owe money to people, yeah, the prison was um, put off for. If you owe money, that and you can't pay it, you go to jail. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so you go to jail and you sit there. I don't know how you pay your bill that way, but. Um, well, your family probably has to pay it just like yeah. back in the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the pilgrims time. So your family had, would have to pay for you being in prison to feed you and, you know, keep your space, but then they'd also have to pay your debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this prison also has, each has a fireplace and you have to get your own wood to, keep yourself warm at night and yeah and your family had to take care of you matter of fact um there was a famous guy that was held there back when he was caught the um who i think the uh, boston strangler something like okay. that and they caught him and they, he was there for a short time then he, he left you know um but that's before i think they they knew he was the strangler you know um, yeah, it was open 1811, uh, Jenny was saying. Um, Penhurst is the 17th, 18th, and 19th. Penhurst um, Paracon. That's another good advice for anybody in the audience that uh, wants to, you know, check out some of this stuff. You know, I, you don't have to be a diehard paranormal um, investigator or ghost hunter or if you're just interested, you know, you go to these places and you get to meet people. And there's going to be a lot of a lot of people there that's going to be part of, uh, what do you call it, the, um, you know, TV. The TV people will be there. And, and there's going to be a lot of people just, just to talk to some of the people that are working there and stuff like that. Um, prison. So so, you work. Someone said that, they, that you worked in the prison until you paid out your debt. Oh, okay. I don't know who that is, but. Okay. Haiti, you just have to move up closer to us, honey. Yeah, Haiti. But they got good stuff down there, too. They got a lot of good paracons going on down they there. Do, oh, they probably. have megacons, which would be like car cartoon um, stuff. They have comic book stuff. They have paranormal stuff. It's all smashed together, which is really awesome. I'm trying to find out who's in the place for Lourdes. Hi. Okay. That's I'm I just got it on and I just see it's Lourdes. Hey Lourdes. Hey did Lourdes, did you hear what I said before? I was introducing you and Ron. I said Ron Gonzalez. So it's Mr. Steve. Gonzalez. So it's Ron Gonzalez. So we don't have to say Lord um Ron <laughs> Yacobetti and Lord Gonzalez. We just cut it short, so we'll put his first name, your last name, we're set. You wear the pants, so he has to take your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the comment was from by Lourdes. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> we heard it. Okay. Uh, Ryan probably loved that one. You know, it sounds, it sounds better than Lourdes Giacovetti. No, no, I, I think she would like that one day, but no, not yet. But. Listen, uh, don't, don't count your chicken. She's going to yeah. do what she wants. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Penhurst. And, I mean, I could go to, on to the rest of the year of all the stuff that's coming on. Yeah. So, uh, so what have you been up to? Have you um, done any investigations, I, or uh, any any readings, or anything, anything good? I'll show you what I'm up to. Ha, <laughs> Bella. <laughs> so okay, Bella, talk. Hey, Bella. I, named her, I named her Delia because we didn't want to have two Bellas. Hello, Delia. What do you want to tell everyone? Put it, put it close to the mic. What did the doggy try to do to you? It's spooky. <laughs> what did the doggy what did the doggy do to you when you came home for the first time? What did he do? Did he try to bite your face off? That was funny. Yeah. He went and tried to snatch her face off. Yeah. So I bought this because Tim and I thought it would be a cool idea to see if they're all kind of like his. And maybe mm -hmm. if we got them together, there might be something that they interact together. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that Raul got one on so. <laughs> and someone else bought two of them. So now we can have a whole Love Abella uh, daycare center. <laughs> That's all. You just put them in the middle of the room, put a microphone on them, and let them chat. So we don't we need to. They're going to take over our investigations. I, we're going to, I don't know. I mean, she, she did curse. Yeah, she did. The one with um, Ron, I'm um, Ron. Hear me. Uh, the one with um, with Tim, always cursing him out. Yeah, she. I said, I guess. I mean, we're all adults here, so what does it matter? But um, I said, what did the doggy do to you? And when he went and tried to snatch her face off, she said, "Doggy shit." <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, they do. I don't know if all of them do that. Maybe oh. they all do. I know. No, she uh, didn't do that yet, Jen. De Dennis um, Tresson, Tresson. I always get his name wrong. But he has like three of those. He, he's did? funny with them. My friend Dennis. Um, he has like three of them. And he goes on Facebook and he'll be like eating his cereal and having those two. They're having them all talk to each other. It's funny. Do do they talk to each other? Yeah, they go. He goes. Can you just leave me alone? And they, they're both yapping up a storm. And he's like eating his cereal or whatever, whatever he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah. So then maybe I mean, do they are they um, do they have attachments? I I don't know. I really don't know. These dolls here, they're very interesting. They're like Chucky dolls. Yeah, like their whole face. It's, it's like a whole army of them. The whole face moves and everything. It's really kind of creepy. When I first took her out of the box, because I got her used, 
and I used my intuition to pick which one I wanted. I got her off of eBay. If anybody's interested, they come new, but they're four hundred and twenty dollars. And um, I did a lot of research, and it said that a lot of them that came off the line. I mean, they only made them for like two years. Um, a lot of them that came off the line were just losing it. They were, you know, their their mouths were like chattering and their eyes were rolling around in their heads and their eyes were blinking. And Sounds they like were Friday night. Hmm? Sounds like a good Friday night. Yeah. Friday with their eyes fluttering in their heads. Yeah. I'm waiting for the head to spin around. So they okay. only made them for like two years because they were coming off the assembly line and they were all having mechanical issues like that where they were cursing and they were you know having me mechanical problems but i'm wondering if it's more that it wasn't mechanical problems and it may not be you know possession it could be that they can say like up to a hundred words or something maybe it's kind of like a parrot where they listen to everything that's being said around them and they kind of start to mock what you do but it's a great possibility that maybe there is something that they have picked up. You know, if you're in a, a warehouse and you're working and you're assembling these things, maybe there is something negative that kind of does attach to it. Everybody has their problems. Everybody has, you know, addictions. Everyone has a loved one that's passed away that they're bringing around with them. Maybe there is something heavier to it, but mm -hmm. I mean, you don't expect to get a doll and it says doggy shit. Like they're pissed because the, the doll, I mean, the dog literally tried to bite her face off. The dogs will not stop barking at this thing. I had to hide it. They hate this doll. They will not go anywhere near her. As soon as she starts to talk and giggles, even when she's put to sleep, because as soon as you put her in this laying down position, she's like, <sighs> and, they're like, rah, 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 rah. like, they don't like her at all. It, they really hate her. And if you tickle her feet, she giggles. If you tickle her belly, she giggles. I mean, she like everything is something different on these dolls. They're very interactive. The dogs despise her and they want her gone. It's almost like when my mother brought my sister home. <laughs> 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 but she really um try to bite her face off uh, well no i did worse than that but we won't get into that today on this <laughs> show um but she is creepy when i first brought her out and i sat her on the table she opened her eyes and she blinked big and she goes mama and i was like oh my god this is like chucky it really kind of freaked me out a little bit uh, it was well, weird so what'd you name her? Delia? Delia, you know, like from Beetlejuice, the mom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I didn't want everybody to have the name Bella. I wanted it to be different. All my dogs and cats and whatever, they're all named after either literary characters from Gothic times or, mm -hmm. you know, Bridget Bishop. She was the first executed witch. So I have a black cat named Bishop and... So I thought, why not? Beetlejuice just made their second movie, and I loved the mom's name, Delia. So she's Delia. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that's cool. I like those. I always, when I first met um, Tim with his doll, I remember when we first got it, tell you the truth, and it was like, that is very cool. And it was like interacting. And we had in rooms, we're doing EVPs, and the thing was saying things like, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So it was really, really interactive with everybody. And if it's interactive with people or something, if the spirit's there, it's going to interact with the spirit because it has the same, if it hears or sense or some, you know, have some sort of feeling, maybe it will interact. So that's those dolls are pretty cool. You know? Yeah. Those, I just, uh, you know, I mean, I, I got enough equipment to carry. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, well, I mean, I, I probably won't be taking her everywhere I go unless something really crazy happens and whatever. But uh, the, the activity in the house has truly picked up since she was brought in. So 
I don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. so it's okay. Well, the dogs already uh, don't like her, so. Oh, no, they hate her. But, I mean, the the new dog, I mean, he's he's going to be two. He doesn't like... He doesn't like little people. <laughs> um, he definitely, uh, he's scared of little people. Like any, any, like the grandkids or whatever, he, he freaks out when the grandkids come over. Oh, really? Mm hmm Yeah. Well, some animals are like that. You know, I know my dog. My my little Dachau, uh, when my friends come over, like they're really like I have some friends are big. I got my friend mm -hmm. Jimmy, and um, he's a big guy. He's like six six two six something, and big guy and stuff. She always freaked out. He's the nicest guy in the world. I she always freaked out. Matter of fact, he came over just to see her because he was gonna get. He wanted one of those dogs, and she and she. I mean, she was a mini a mini Dachau, yeah. and she was like go. Oh, like trying to bite his feet, and she was only like that with like big, big guys. And he's like, Oh, oh. he was like, Come, and he's like, She's she won't go near him and everything. So, I guess maybe because of the height, and whatever. But yeah, and she and she we got her, and she didn't have no previous owner or anything. We actually, my, my we we purchased her from um a place that, that sold the dogs so. Yeah, it was, um, but she always tried to bite him, whatever reason. So I don't know. Richard, Richard Lale is coming in in any moment now, so don't go anywhere, everybody. He just he was mistaken of the time. And Ron, I see you've changed your name to Ron Zalez, <laughs> like Juan Valdez. It's like Prince, a one word name, but now you can make it a symbol. Yeah. Hi, Bobby. Thanks for stopping in. Ron, um, formerly known as, no, the symbol formerly known as Ron. Yeah, or Ron Zalez, Juan Valdez. <laughs> hey, Bobby's in the audience. Hey, Bobby. We got Bobby pretty good Bell. people there. Hades in there and Jenny. Yeah, this and is Ron, I like this group. Ron and Lourdes and Bob. Some of our favorite people in the audience. Yeah. And Ronald, yes, you are one of our favorites too. Don't don't feel you're uh, not included in that. And Bobby, of course, Bobby. But yeah, some of our favorite, our favorite people are there. Yeah, can I, Bobby? I will probably see him. At, hey, Bobby, I'll see you at White Hill. You you're gonna be out there. I see you uh, put something down that you're gonna be there. So we'll be up at White Hill. To check you out. Uh, me, me uh, and I think me, Jenny, and I'm not sure if any of the other para, parasite people are going to be there. Yeah, you know, so I'm going to go there and check that out too. I haven't been there. I haven't been to White Hill in a while. I miss White Hill. That was that was fun. That's a fun place. Oh, I think somebody came in. I was just going to invite him in a different way because he was having trouble. Hold on. Here Rich, Hi. I'm so sorry. I did forget. I'm so very sorry. Well, then um, I'm glad I sent you a shout out. <laughs> yes, me too. I, 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 I actually have to be at work in just a few minutes, but uh, in 30 minutes. But I think that'll be okay. I'm sorry it's on That's my phone. Good. Let me see if I can rotate it sideways. That's good. I'm just glad that you can make it with us. You look fabulous as always. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so... What can we talk about? So we have a half an hour with you. What can we talk about that will I, say, be, you know, take as much time as you want? I, 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 I'm, I'm going to walk. What I'm going to do, I'm going to walk down towards uh, where I work. And then we'll just keep talking. And then. Nope. You lost it. Oh, where am I? We hear you. Okay, here, here I am. Let me, <laughs> let me, what I'll do is I'm going to get down, uh, five minutes I'll get down to work, and then I'll just sit up at a table down there, and then uh, I will just be a little bit later than I, than I was supposed to be for actually setting up and reading cards. So I'll, I'll, I'll walk with you and talk with you, and then mm -hmm. I'll just 
We'll take we'll take an hour if we need to. How about yeah. that? That That's sounds great. Right We're now just... you're walking down the street. you're in New Orleans. I'm in New Orleans, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, you know I'm from New York. That's how we say New Orleans. You know? <laughs> Well, there's, <laughs> so I, I really I, I don't mind New Orleans, though it, it, people here who are local will will bark at you. They'll say, no, it's New Orleans. Uh, though, I know. I had that people correct me already. I really, 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 really hate when people call it Nolens because nobody and I mean nobody calls it Nolens. Nolens. That doesn't make sense. So. <laughs> <laughs> What street are you walking down right now? Because you know I'm in New York. I don't know anything about New Orleans. It looks it looks wild in the background there. Yeah, this is lovely. This street is St. Peter. I uh, I read tarot at a little shop called Apothecary, the Vampire Apothecary, down on St. Peter. Oh, that's. It looks really pretty. Yeah. It's lovely. It's a very pretty street. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to. Hold my bag and, and coffee in one hand. Not coffee, tea. I'm allergic to coffee. Oh. Oh. That's a shame. If I well, was in... That's right. I'll drink tea. It's fine. No, tea's good. I like tea. But I didn't need my morning coffees. <laughs> <laughs> so you have been clairvoyant since you were... A child. Yes. And it runs in your family. It does. Sorry, I'm going to switch my hand. Hold on a second. I don't lose my bag. There we go. Can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, so I, I have been clairvoyant since I was a kid. Um, both of my parents were. Sorry, it's so noisy. I'll, I'll get to a space with, that's quiet. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um, so yeah, I, when my, when I was five, my father came down with polio, French, French polio, Guillaume de Rie, I think is what it's called. Yes. And, uh, he slipped into a coma and everyone asked me, they said, well, what do you want for your birthday? And I said, my father is coming home for my birthday. And they would say, oh, bless your little heart, which for those of you who are not in the South means you dumb little piece of crap so. <laughs> and uh so my father slipped away he actually died he was dead for a long time 20 minutes maybe long yeah. time they called my mother my mother was was rushing to the emergency room or ru rushing rather to the to the hospital and uh my father sat up in bed for the first time in months and uh scared the nurse to death, which, of course, that is what one would expect. <laughs> and the doctor came running in and said, what happened? What happened? And he said, I don't know, doc. I just said hello. And she passed out. The doctor said, well, if a corpse strays out of bed and talk to you, you might pass out, too. <laughs> so my, sure. my father came home the day and the night before my fifth birthday. And my mother, I was sitting there coloring. And she said, honey, are you excited? Your daddy came home for your birthday. And I said, I knew he was going to, but I'll have him for 20 more years. Maybe a little more, but 20 more years. 20 years later, he died the day and the night after my 25th birthday. Oh, oh my. Mm. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. So you have been traveling all over the US, all over Europe, learning. Yes teaching yes. and now you teach at University Magicus. I do, yes. So what types of classes do you teach? Uh, we teach all kinds, uh, metaphysical. Uh, this Saturday I'm teaching one on blood magic rituals. Um, we, we teach things like uh, opening up your, your, your psychic abilities, tuning into your, yourself, listening to yourself. Um, spells, manifestations, all kinds of things. Okay. And and Patty Negri, is it her school or yes, she is she and Father Sebastian are the co-founders. I I was there from the beginning, but they are the the actual co-founders. 
one second where Bourbon Street gets to be a little hectic. I'm just going to cross the street and then I'll be right into the shop. Okay. And then I'll, I'll, I'll be able to actually hear you. Oh, okay. I always have to psych myself out to go down Bourbon. <laughs> well, we're getting a little tour of New Orleans. That's cool. It's kind of amazing. It. Yeah, it looks really nice. It's a three three hundred year old city. It's really beautiful. There, it it has a certain charm. That's for certain. <laughs> okay, I'm almost there to the shop. I'll just come in and go right upstairs. Yeah. Here we are. Nice. Look at the shop. I'm going to take this call upstairs. This is okay. Now it'll be a little bit more quiet. Let me see. I set my bag up and I'll take my glasses off. Oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, Thank you. Let me, let me turn it around this way. So the lighting is behind, in front of me instead of behind me. There. Great. <sighs> so we, we actually had Patty as one of our guests. She was wonderful. I mm -hmm. love Patty. She's Patty is one of my dearest friends on the planet. She's wonderful, wonderful. So I, you, we, you've been on Ghost Adventures, and that was one of my favorite episodes I've ever seen. Hold on. Let me come in here because now, now the internet is acting strangely. <laughs> okay, how's this? Maybe, maybe here. I'll hold it. How's that? Hello. Hello, Barry. Okay. So you, you, you were saying uh, Ghost Adventures. I said you were, you're, you were on Ghost Adventures, and that episode was one of my very favorites. I, I, it was a good one. It was a good one. I was on two, um, the Pasadena Ritual House, which was the first one, and the second one was, um, the second one was the Los Feliz Murder Mansion which was also fun. But the that first was one probably it. Yeah, the, the 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 first one which is the uh, Pasadena Ritual House was they actually investigated me and then mm -hmm. they had me mm -hmm. they had me back for for this murder mansion in in Los Feliz. It was I think you were living in the house that did at one time house uh, LaVey. Yes, that was that was actually in um, that was the Pasadena one. Okay, and it was um, it was extremely interesting because the look on Aaron Goodwin's face <laughs> was just fantastic. Well, you know what was so yeah. funny? Oh, I'll set my phone up here. What was so funny about it? was that I had not watched Ghost Adventures since I was, you know, probably 10 years at that point. And I didn't know, I didn't know their names. I knew Zach's name, but I didn't know the rest of their names. <laughs> and when it calls out Zach, I mean, uh, when it calls out Aaron, that the look on his face was so funny. Poor Aaron. I didn't realize that the ghost sort of always liked to, liked to pick on Aaron. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but it didn't come up as Aaron. It came up as Godwin, not Goodwin. Godwin. Mm -hmm. it was just, he looked like he wanted to run. <laughs> well, why is I? I'm having a hard time finding good connectivity point. I keep. It, it, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll just sit down here. It's the spirits. Well, I'm I'm in a very old building. The building is early 1800s. 18. 1820, I think, is what I heard. Wow. There we go. Oops. I thought that would hold. <laughs> I am so embarrassed that I 
<laughs> no, you're fine. you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. We're just happy to have you with us. Yeah, yeah. This is. So yeah, the, the 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 board spelled out Godwin. But the funniest thing to me was when um, they asked me to stay and do a seance. So I went in and I got dressed and I set up my seance board and and uh, I I had my rum in the middle of the table as an offering. <laughs> and at the point when I I, I started meditating. And the rum in the glass started doing this. And just as the, the rum got going really good, in the parlor, they get an EVP that says, take a drink. And Zach says, take a drink of what? Of blood? What? <laughs> yeah. What do they think you're, you are? I mean... Well, you know, when when people hear Satanist, they think of some 1980s horror film that, you know, that there's a lot of a lot of gore and a lot of, and that's not really what Diabolist or Satanists do. That's 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 right. so not what that's so. And not what we do. the reason why we started this show is because we wanted to educate people and not just about investigating or spirit. Mm -hmm or you know the other side we wanted to pick out different religions and let people learn for themselves so that they didn't think that you're barbecuing babies or you know whatever so can mm -hmm. you tell the audience a little bit about what the basis is so that they're not freaking out or you know of course so mm -hmm. i am not a member of the church of satan i am not a member of the satanic temple i admire both of them for different reasons, but I am independent. However, I will tell you that Satanism is not about any of the things that one would perceive. Satan actually mm. means opponent. And people like me oftentimes will oppose the tyranny of rules set up by, by an ancient sky deity who was a war god. And so, you know, we question, we say, why, why, why? So that's that's the major thing is that we we there are seven satanic tenants in the Church of Satan. There are seven satan eleven satanic rules for the earth in the Church of Satan. Um, both of them are great rules to live by. It's basically be nice to each other. Don't don't do things that you wouldn't want done to you. It's it's really humanistic. Mm -hmm. So you're basically following the golden rule. Absolutely. Okay. And then do you also follow an eye for an eye if someone does something to you? Well, there is a little of that, of course. Um, though, frankly, I don't have, I don't have the energy for that. <laughs> because it does require a lot of energy to, to, to deal with it. Now, it can, I, I, there can be something really cathartic about, about saying, you know, I curse you and may you get what you deserve. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I really don't want, I don't have the energy to hold on to all of that negative energy. I just, I just don't. Mm -hmm. So I, I basically am more pacifist in the, in the sense that, you know, I'll stand up for what's right. I'll stand up for human freedoms. I'll stand up for, for human rights, for animal rights. I'll stand up mm -hmm. for you. But I, when it comes to when people do me wrong, I go, all right. Well, good luck with your life. I'm done with you. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with you anymore. I'm done. It's the way to be. I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> it's like that's it. Hands washed. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So there well, really isn't anything oh. that different about that religion than most of the religions. There is some truth in that, excepting for the image of the devil is oftentimes invoked more along the lines to, to show that we are, mm -hmm. humans are animals mm -hmm. and we are sometimes better than our animal counterparts, but most of the time we're not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Buddhism can be really lovely, but it can also, Buddhism can get also love and light, love and light, love and light, and then I'll kill you. If that's sort of the line of, of, of Buddhism. So there's, it's similar to that, but at the same time, it's not because it says we can be a little bit selfish and that's okay. We're, we're, we're animals. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Interesting. It's very interesting. Because, I mean, everything that we proceed on anything, you know, e um, sadism or even with the paranormal, or you have, it's what we get from the TV. Absolutely. So, so a lot of people take their TV, you know, a, a movie or something as the real, as what they perceive it to be. And TV's just going for ratings and stuff like that. So they want to make things look bad and, you know, everything's mm -hmm. going to hard against you and, you know, everything's evil or bad and demons. You know, mm -hmm. Demons. Everything, oh, being a paranormal investigator, you got people, everything's a demon, 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 you know. But, you know, that's what happens. We watch the movies, we watch the TV show, mm -hmm. and, and that's where people get their opinions from, but not actually talking to somebody or experience going to a class or just have friends that are in, you know, different, doing these different things, but they see what's on TV or in the movies, and that's like, oh, that's the way it is, you know? You know? The, the um, Ouija board was a 19th century invention and it was you know, it was after the civil war and then you, you have well before it was the fox sisters with their their popping and cracking and and then it was in the 19th late 19th century 1890s when the actual ouija board came into fashion and people had lost a lot of loved ones and it became this sort of spiritualistic movement mm -hmm. but by mm -hmm. the 1960s it was kind of a funny little game nobody gave it any credence until the 70s when um, oh, uh, the exorcist came in. Oh, yeah. When, when people saw the exorcist, oh, I don't want to contact a demon. Either demons, it's a demon. I don't want mm -hmm. a demon. Well, that was really Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was based on a real story from a boy who yes. in the 40s. But did he contact a demon through a Ouija board? No. Mm-hmm. It, it's you know between the Ouija. I mean, it's like I said, we we get everything our knowledge from TV shows. You know, not mm -hmm. unless you sit down and do the research on something, or just like an interview today. We're probably going. I'm going to probably learn a lot from you because I know so much about you know sadism and, and everything else. You know, I'm I'm a Roman Catholic, but you know. I'm open to everything, and I know, well, and I'm friends, you know, I, I got many friends with different religions and everything, so. I do, too, and here's the deal. I, I will fight for anybody's right to believe whatever they want to believe. You want to believe the world is flat? Great. Mm -hmm. Believe it. I'll, I'll fight for you to believe that. Are you wrong? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I'll fight for you to believe it. The only thing is, don't push it on other people. Exactly. You know, don't. Mm -hmm. have, have your have your belief or lack of belief that's great good for you whatever makes mm -hmm. you happy but when when you say no mine is the only one that is right and i'm going to restrict your vote and i'm going to force you to say my prayers that's when i have an issue i do too yeah i understand that yes do you actually teach this or people come to you for advice and you know on on the uh because i know there's a lot of there's you know, interest in it too. You know, I actually, um, my friend had the, the Satanic Bible, and we mm -hmm. read a couple of passages on that, and it was interesting. I, I didn't think anything bad about it. No, it's it's you know, Anton Xander Levey was an artist and a poet. Mm -hmm. um, he was very theatrical, and I that is one of the aspects I love about the Church of Satan. It was theatrical, mm -hmm. and and Anton Levey came on the scene at the opportune time. It was this. It was the 1960s. Mm -hmm. People were already starting new religions everywhere. People were already yeah. starting anti-establishment religions. They were already sort of working their magic to create a new way. And so he came on the scene right at the opportune time, mm -hmm. and because he was connected to actors in Los Angeles, it helped propel his idea. Yeah, Anton Levey was a brilliant man. Mm -hmm. He was he was theatrical, but he was brilliant. Yeah, I say, I just know like what they tell you in the movies and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I like I said, we we read some of the passages out of it, and like I said, it was interesting. And you know, 
Like I said, I, I didn't well, think anything bad of it. You know, you know, we, we we are as creatures, we are very audio visual, mm -hmm. and we do believe what we see and hear. And the movies, that's mm -hmm. how we get a lot of our information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know, I, I we watched on uh, Patty Negri and I do a, a podcast every week called Witches Movie Coven, where we discuss witchcraft in cinema. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, Patty Negri and and Heather Green and Courtney Buckley and Jason Mankey and myself. And we talk about witchcraft in, in cinemas. And this last week, we watched Time Bandits, which, by the way, spoiler alert, I hate it. Um, <laughs> but beyond that, in, in, in this film, the Time Bandits go gallivanting through, through time, and they end up by meeting Napoleon, who's obsessed with short people and short things, short things hitting people. And Napoleon was... He, by modern standards, was short, but he was not short by 18th and 19th century standards. He was about average. So, mm. but the entire time, he's he's overcompensating for, in the film. He's overcompensating for his lack of height, which we believe it because it, it is in pop culture. It's in media. It's what we believe. It's not true. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes with paranormal. The same thing goes with Anything. <laughs> it's like anything. anything supernatural, paranormal, anything that anything that's not it's just misunderstood with the public. Exactly. You know, he, it, could, it could be anything. Anything that's misunderstood, and we perceive what we see on TV, and that's I mean, all movies. You know, so absolutely. Or, or what we hear from somebody else. Oh, that the. You know the rumors going around about this and that, and it's like, wait, you know, sit back and just try to experience something and learn about it. You know. Mm hmm. I agree. You know that's that's what we have a problem with with this TV and everything, and of course they want to make money off this whatever they're putting out there, whatever they're producing, because that's what it is—the money making thing. So they'll they'll give you half truth. Every time, mm -hmm. every time, have truth, and then they blow it out of proportion to make it. Well, and that's why it is important that I, I tell people trust your trust yourself. If, when I do readings, I tell people this. I say, cards are not magic. Mm -hmm. Cards are tools that help us tell a story. I am looking through a very small window into your world. I have no outside context. I say what I see but I'm playing Pictionary with the universe. If I say something that means something more to you, trust your intuition before you trust mine. Because again, mm -hmm. I'm not in your world. Words mm -hmm. have more than one meaning. Pictures have more than one meaning. Mm -hmm. So if you find meaning in it, that is the meaning that is meant for you. I'm not in your world. I am not the translator. Yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. It's, yeah. I see you also paint. You painted too. I seen um because I you know, last couple of days since I heard that you're coming on the show and of course I had to do my 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 research. Uh, well, and thank you. Yes, I, I do. I, 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 I paint uh, I'm I've been working on one of my own decks. I was a little lax this last year, but I I've, I've been working on creating my own deck of tarot yeah. cards. And then every wow. almost every week almost. Uh, we do Scared and Alone with Courtney Buckley and Dean Hagland, and sometimes Patty is there. So we 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 send Courtney into a haunted location, mm -hmm. and I paint the specters that I see in in the in the haunted space. I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm not in the house. I'm not in the space. I'm in my own home, and mm -hmm. Courtney is the only one that's there. And I paint the images that I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I started watching a little bit of show. Like I said, I caught a couple of clips. And that's with the picture um, that's on your Facebook page with the, the flame. It the, the looks mm -hmm. like a house on fire. It yeah. was, it, we, it was, that was the Weymouth, Massachusetts. I think that was where that one was. Um, there was, it was a congregational church that there were three that stood in the, on that spot that all was, there was, there was one, in, a shaker, like a Quaker meeting house that burned down. And then there was one that was, that was, was built in the 19th century and it burned down. And then it became a, a town hall, which burned down and nearly the clock nearly crushed the fire department. And then it became, they tore 
you know, that part down because it was it was ruined. And then they built a jail over it and in, in concrete. And it, that was built in like 1930 something. So on that same spot, it had three major fires. Oh, wow. Wow. Why am I seeing like the doors being tied shut? You mean in, in that painting? It, it's possible. It is possible that that has happened. Though you, you may also be picking that up here. Um, so New Orleans is a very old city. New Orleans has burned several times. Um, this building that we're in is 18, 18, 1812, some, somewhere, somewhere early, early 19th century. Mm -hmm. um, many places were burned here and the attic housed what was called the casket girls. They, they, were, they, they were young women who carried around little caskets, little, little jewelry boxes and they were kept in the attic. They were, they were supposed to be the guardians of, well, they, they, they wanted to bring men here, so they wanted to keep them interested. And, mm -hmm. and the nuns would keep them bound in their little rooms. So that may, mm -hmm. be, that may be what you're picking up on, on this end. So they were bound in the room and the place was torched? There were, there were times that it, 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 it just fires just spread the, the, mm -hmm. the girls had tried to escape out one of the attic windows, but the, the doors were locked. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I think New Orleans, the biggest fire, one of the fires was like 1905, something like that. A lot, yes. It's, yeah, it's, it was a big fire. It almost burned down the whole, it burned a lot of places in there. Yeah, because New Orleans, you know, back then, you know, everything's made out of wood anyway. So, yeah. On Spark, it just, set off everything well and that was the, the original the, the the french settlers that were here everything was made of wood everything mm -hmm. and then with the, with in the early 19th century there was a major fire that destroyed much of new orleans i mean it's burned like three times um so when the spanish took over in in the in the early 1800s they they made things out of brick they thought that it would it would protect against the fire and it does a little bit but it's still it it's it still burned down since then yeah oh that's interesting you know so we have a couple of questions for you sure they we have tons of comments that come through we have a, a great regular group um someone wants to know can you ask what type of style his deck is that he's creating will sure. be like um, so my, my deck is, um, it's based off of the traditional, um, now I, I, my, I'm drawing a blank now that I put it on the spot. Um, it's it, like the, the rider weight style? The, it's the traditional rider weight, but all of them are sort of special to me. Like, for instance, um, the magician is the white rabbit from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use images of, of different ancient deities that i use uh lord 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 shiva and i use i use um uh kalima and i i use i use images i use there's there, there are classic literary stories like um the adventures of baron munchausen and there are it's just things that i sort of like my favorite however happens to be a past life, which is really, oh. really curious as to why I'm here. Um, mm. So w we were at the, I, I, I'll, I'll go back on, and tell you this, so I can tell you why about, about that. I'll tell you the card. So it has my face, the card has my face, and I'm dressed as Bo Peep, little Bo Peep. And the name of the card is B-E-A-U Peep, Beauregard. Okay. His name is Beauregard Peep. It turns out that we did a Scared and Alone show and my friend asked me why I knew so much about the American Civil War and I said I was here. She said, oh, and, and I, she said, so you, you really think you might have been a northerner? I went, mm, well, I've been to the north, but I don't, I think probably I was not. I think I was probably not. As much as I would like to say that I was on the right side, I, I, I don't think I was. And then I, I Googled really quickly and I found General Beauregard. 
and General Beauregard looks like me. And he was, he was a Confederate general, but after the American Civil War, he only, he left his, he left his, his post at West Point Academy in, in, in the Hudson, New York. And he, he, because Louisiana had seceded from the Union. And he said, well, it's my home. I have to go fight for my home. But after the Civil War, he said, listen, leave these old ideas in the past. We don't need those anymore. Those are old ideals. He said, you know, I, I admire Abraham Lincoln. He did, he did the right thing. And then Beauregard became a civil rights activist. And he spent a lot of time with his, his male hairdresser, who was a black man, and his very best friend, who was a Latino man. There were lots of rumors. Nobody knows for certain. <laughs> but he was, he was a civil rights activist after the war. Oh. I love it. I love that story. Yeah. On your page, you, you have the, the picture of, of um, Bogart and you. You have that picture on it. And, and I was looking at it like, and now, now I make sense. It's like you told the story. And he does look like you. Right? Yeah. And I thought it was like one of those black and white type of, you know, you get a souvenir type of thing. Like, he looks just like you. That was, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, yeah. they say they say if you have a past life that you look very similar mm -hmm. to yourself. There may be some, you know, changes, sure. but even your personality is very similar. I hope I didn't uh, look like this through eternity. <laughs> I hope my waist was smaller. Who, who, do I, who do I piss off? <laughs> Man. Um, <laughs> let's see what else we have. Can you name the most famous person you have done a reading for? Well, is well, that I like won't name? I won't. I won't name names. I won't. Client name names. confidentiality. <laughs> yeah, no, I won't name names. I will tell you that some of my clientele have won Oscars. That's all I will say. That's a good okay. answer. Some of my some of my clientele have won Emmys. Some of my clientele have won Tonys. That's all I will say. Okay. Um, I missed a question, but I don't know. Uh, well, Lourdes asked a question about the um, after Katrina. That's Lourdes. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if that was after or before. I'm going, that was the next one. After Katrina, did you feel an energy shift in uh, well, New Orleans? Well, I, I wasn't here then. I wasn't. I wasn't here in New Orleans then. Didn't uh, you live in San Francisco prior? During, yes. So I, I've lived all over the world: London, Greece, Denmark, Sweden, San Francisco, Vegas, uh, Los Angeles, New York, Pennsylvania, even briefly. So I've only been here in in New Orleans for ten months. And um, does, does was there a shift? I mean, I can I, I can tell there's a shift. I can tell there's a shift, even though I wasn't here before this. Mm. Yeah, I figured okay. with all that stuff that happened down there, everything would, you know, spiritually and everything else, you know, mm -hmm. changed. Well, maybe got more than it was, or. Um, Bloody, Bloody Mary was on our show, and she said that she saw a significant change for yeah. sure. Bloody Mary is one of my dear friends, and she is lovely. And she she is she is a Nola resident. She her her ancestors go back hundreds of years here, mm -hmm. so yeah, she would talking. she would be the one to know that, that there was a shift. Yes. Yeah, she she said there was. Uh, um, that's who, Jenny. Who's who wants to know how do you engage your cardomancy? Well, how do I engage with it? I mean, I, the first thing I do is. I clear my mind. I have the sitter sit up nice and tall. Together we inhale through the nose, we, we hold the breath, we exhale through the mouth, three breaths to connect the mind, the body, the spirit. And then I always get images in my head and I'll say things, I'll just say what I see. Case in point is that I had, um, I, I had a client in New York 
and she sits down and I said, I keep seeing the Star Trek logo and I hear to boldly go, but it doesn't <laughs> go beyond that. It doesn't say to boldly go where no man has gone before. It just says to boldly go. And she goes, huh, okay. So we go through the reading and I said, oh, I lay out the cards. And I said, there's a gentleman who's coming back into your world that was not, but he's coming back. And she laughed and she said, okay, here's the deal. I was seeing someone here in New York and we're both Star Trek fans. We love it. It's huge. It's our favorite thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And he moved away. So we, we, we didn't pursue a relationship and now he's coming back. And I was just today talking to him about Star Trek. Ooh. Oh, wow. And the reason it didn't say where no man has gone before is because she's already, she has. But it says just oh, go. she's go there. Mm -hmm. She's already been there. <laughs> um, there are a lot of times that when I'm going to do a reading, on my way there, I will get information even before mm -hmm. who it is, their name, anything like that. Do you often have the same thing happen? Absolutely. 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 Okay. 100%. Now, I used to be a singing blackjack dealer back in Vegas. And this this was the funny thing because I, I, I would deal blackjack while dressed as Freddie Mercury and singing the music of Queen. <laughs> and I would we had an automatic shuffler and I would know if I would touch the back of the card, I would know how the entire game was going to play. And the, I, it just took me to touch one card and I knew the entire game. Wow. So I, I, I remember there was a, there was a, there were, there were three people sitting at my table and number one had, um, number one had, I think he had 13 and then number two, had 11 and number three had i don't remember what number three had but it'll it'll come into play in a second and i had a six and i said to this fella i, I said what do you want he says hit me i said listen this card right here this is a 10. this is this is the queen this is the queen of hearts <laughs> you're going to bust you're going to lose you're going to lose anyway but if you take this 10, that means that this guy right here who has who ha has 11, he needs that 10. He is going to have 21. But if you take that card, he'll have 17. And then that means that if he gets 17, this next guy is going to get, he'll have 19. He was supposed to have gotten 21 as well. And um, that means that I'm going to draw 21. And this guy, number number two, is betting for me. And he said, I said, hit me. And I said, fine. 23, <laughs> you busted. 17, 18, 21. Did he get up and leave? Oh, yeah. He was gone. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, oftentimes I do. I don't know how it works. I would even, I would get to the point where I would even lay all the cards out face down on the table. And I would go through and I would say things like, uh, 13, 21, 17, 16, 15, 12. And as I turned the cards over, I was right all the time. Ooh. How did it work? I don't know. They, they can't said, even say it's rigged because. They said, well. It's a shuffler. You, how, how can you fix it then? You know, it's an automatic shuffler. It's an automatic shuffler. Yeah. And you're not and order. you don't know if they're going to tell you to hit them, you know, hold, whatever. I pretty well knew. I pretty well knew. <laughs> but you but they, you know, they didn't know what they were going to do. They didn't know. But I did. When I go to Vegas, you got the shuffle for me. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'd be like twenty one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> so we have a couple more. Who inspires you most in your life? Who inspires me the most? Well, that's that is a tough question. Um, I ha I have so many, for living and dead. But I I think I guess I I'll just say my own mother. My mother is is passed away, so uh, she was always my inspiration. She was my best friend. Aww. She was always kind to me. 
she she was always understanding. We didn't see eye to eye on a lot of subjects, but she was lovely and she was my best friend. So I think I think I'd have to say her. That's nice. That's awesome. When you you know I mean that many people have inspirations. That's their parents, and I, I think that's that's nice. My both of my parents were really really amazing upstanding wonderful good people if mm -hmm. ever there was a real christian that walked this earth those two people were the epitome of what christianity should be <laughs> yeah I, I i i see one of the interviews with you um was it protestant um yeah, they were pentecostal pentecostal yes my wife's big at pentecostal well she was brought up pentecostal but yeah we so have I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just, that's, I'm Catholic, you know, from when we gather and she's Pentecostal, so it's a little, you know, sometimes a little difference there, but yeah. A little bit different. Yeah. A little yeah. different. But it is what it is. Slightly. <laughs> um, Ron Yacobetti says, have you worked in conjunction with any electronic ITC method before? We've been fortunate to have run our white noise method Staticom in a digital seance with Patty Negri and Bloody mm -hmm. Mary. That's amazing. They have, it's, I can't even mm -hmm. say. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Static um, stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I have done a few of those. Um, I was in Vermont and I, I had done one and they, they I was I was actually in the other room and they had someone who was in the other room listening to the device. And then they had a caller mm -hmm. between and every time I would say something, now she had the earphones in. She was she couldn't hear anything. Oh yeah. And I, I every time I would talk, she would answer me in the other room. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. So I have I have used it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm really very very old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes I it, for me I just use the images and pictures and sounds and smells and noises that I get in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit Victorian. I, I I did a seance the other day where I tried to use the uh, the electronic voice, like a pan box, ghost box, or something. Yeah. Ghost box. I did. I tried it on my phone. I couldn't even figure out how to make it work. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I I went kicking and screaming into the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ufi wants to know: Are you ever wrong, and how does that make you feel? Well, you know, I'm a human being, and am I ever wrong? Yes, I am wrong. Sometimes I think I don't want, sometimes an image is not, is not the entire truth. Sometimes it's only a partial truth. Mm. Um, I admit to it, I open it and say, I was wrong in this one. At, at, at a case in point, I was on a show back in Los Angeles, Odd Man Out, and they wanted, they had five real psychics and one fake psychic. And I said, oh, that's easy. I told the producer, I said, that's easy. The woman, she is beautiful, she's young, she's 23, she's mixed ethnic, she's got curly hair, beautiful skin, and she's Googled how does a psychic dress. And when she comes in, she's going to be wearing mandalas and beads and she's going to be beautiful. And here's the kicker, she doesn't know it, but she's actually a psychic herself. So in walks all these people and I went, okay, okay, okay. I know you, I know you, May, you know, I, and then in walks this woman and she was exactly like I described. Well, I was broke as a joke. This was before, this was before uh, ghost adventures. I was like, oh crap, I have bills to pay. I didn't know how much money I was getting. I didn't care. So the first woman I'd want, I'd made the mistake by watching how the show worked before so it usually went three rounds that was what they did three rounds and the first woman we all voted out because she was rude she was just rude mm -hmm. and then i thought okay well i guess everyone knows we're playing the game everyone knows what i know everybody knows it so the next woman was very rude to me and she says oh yeah maybe you're the fake you're wearing makeup and i went yeah yeah, I am. I'm on, I'm on television. I wear makeup anyway. Why not? Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that she'd voted for me and I was wrong. She didn't. And I voted for her. And I, my thought was when I went up to that, to that podium, I thought I fought with myself for about 20 seconds. 
And I thought, I know that it's Paris. I know the fake is the woman standing next to me, but so does everybody else. Clearly they know that we're playing the game. Clearly they know that. Clearly everyone knows that we're trying to get the worst people out so that we can actually get more money together. Okay, all right. Next round, we'll vote for Paris. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. So we we complete the round. They vote out that woman. And I thought, ha-ha, yes. Everyone understands. They understand they, that we're all on the same wavelength. And then they said, if you would like to continue playing the game and you feel like that the fake is still in, raise your hands. There was only me and the woman on the other side of Paris. Everybody else voted mm -hmm. to quit playing the game. And I, I turned and I said, no, you were next. You were obviously the fake the entire, what is it, what? Mm -hmm. And then in the, in the comments, they said, oh yeah, sure. You knew afterwards, you knew afterwards. Oh yeah, right, sure, sure. You, you knew afterwards. And I went, well, the only problem was that I second guessed myself and I thought that I had more time than I did. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's where I get wrong is when I second guess, when I say, no, I'm going to play the game and I, I, it'll be okay. I'll go against my, I'll go against what I actually feel. I'll go against my intuition. I'll go ahead and do it and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's yeah. not. Trust it's your intuition. Always, it's always like I, I the, watched that episode last night. I did too. <laughs> she, she said she was from Japan and all this stuff. The, the woman. Yeah. I remember you saying, yeah, that was funny. Yeah, it's yeah. always when you second guess yourself. It's always right. when free will comes into play. I always tell people if someone says that they're a hundred percent all the time, find another psychic medium because it's bullshit. It is bullshit. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely bullshit. You can't, we, we can only be about 85%. And I, I tell you, I have people that come to me and they say, well, tell me about my health. And I tell them this, I will tell you what the cards say, but I am not a doctor. I don't do mm -hmm. health. I am yes. not going to tell you that you're going to be okay. I'm not going to tell. I, trust your doctor. I'll tell you what the cards say if you really want to ask it. I'm not a doctor. They'll ask me about should I should I invest in this company? And I say, listen, I am not a financial planner. I barely take care of my own. I'm not a financial planner. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't play the stocks. I can tell you this is what the card says. I'm not going to tell you that's what you should do. Do not take my advice unless you have already studied yourself because mm -hmm. I will not be responsible for your stock crashing and then you you losing everything and you saying, well, you told me. Right. That's why you have to say mm -hmm. for entertainment only. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> um, somebody wants to know what is the earliest experience you remember indicating your gifts and was it through a dream images, feeling, seeing or hearing? Well, Hmm. I was Lord is to ask that question. That's a good question. I, I mean, I oh, I've always had dreams. Um, I think it was probably I think I think it was probably a dream. I I I was always dreaming of old haunted houses, which I love, but in the dreams they were scary. Um, <laughs> and then that it it sort of. In one of the dreams, I, I took it like this and I squashed it and I threw it over my shoulder, like it was it was me conquering my fear. So that was that was one of the ways. Um, you know, I, I grew up Pentecostal and they believe in they believe in, in in the gift of prophecy. So I was I was uh, I I walked into rooms and I knew things. I just I just knew it. I could I, I thought I was telling you things that you already know, like. Your shirt is black. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. Look, my shirt is black. So is mine. <laughs> See? So wow. is you can never get that wrong with investigators because all we wear is black. Black, <laughs> light black, pastel black, charcoal. Yeah. <laughs> I think all my shirts are black. I don't think I think I, I have, have one blue shirt. I think I go to like pastel black, which just means it's been washed too much. Mm. Mm -hmm. But I, lo I love the way you dress. It's just a thing. Thank you. I was feeling a little bit eclectic today. Very sassy. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, I think Bobby Gallo, this might be Bobby Gallo. Bobby I need Gallo. to find out 
mustache wax he uses. It's called Death Grip. Death Grip? I love it. Okay. That was, he's very fancy also, very classy. He lives in a castle also. How delightful. Yeah. Um, were you able to give yourself superpowers in your dreams? Superpowers. Well, I mean, I, I guess. I mean, I, I have. I was able to fly in some of them, but even still, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, superpowers. I don't that know. Might be something else, anyway. I, I mean, the, the the thing is, I do I do what's called dream walking. I do I do walk through people's dreams sometimes inadvertently and sometimes on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so, do are they superpowers? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't I don't think it's supernatural so much as it is just a natural thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know. Yeah. Well, someone else, I don't know if this is the same person or not. Is there any significance if you don't dream or dream but don't remember them? I think that people do dream and they don't even realize that they are. Absolutely. And then we forget in the mornings because we have our alarms that go off. Um, if you can't dream, you can't dream. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Or you're just forgetting that you did because there's so much stuff going on in your head. Or, or you're under a lot of stress or you're on medications or you're getting too or you have a health concern. I mean, it's it's not for it's not everybody's gift. Um, Ufi has a has a question about they love your they love your whole. Well, thank you so much. Um, what's the backstory for the Pythagorean sideburns? Well, you know what, likes them. I, I just liked them. I think we're frozen. I, also, the razor sort of fits right there, so I so it, it, it <laughs> makes it nice and sharp. Do you walk into someone's dream with their permission, or is it by accident? I'm sorry. I repeat that when you you cut out on me. Do you walk into someone's dream with their permission, or is it by accident? Sometimes it is by accident. Most of the time, it is with permission. There was, for instance, I will tell you the story. I was going to refrain from it, but I will tell you a story. So um, a friend of mine from Los Angeles, his mother lived in, in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, I beg your pardon. And uh, she had injured her back. And so he says, well, I think it's all in her head. I'm just going to, I'm just going to give her something to let her, let her, let it be a placebo. I said, don't do that. Don't do that actually let me do something for her let me actually do something let me meditate for her so i i i wrote her a letter i told her that I, with her permission i would be coming into her dreams and that i did give her i did give her a meditation stone a worry stone as it were and then i went into my meditation and in this in the dream that i had i was in a cave and i was wearing my top hat and i was working on somebody's back and then the next thing I know, this woman, this woman is standing there and she's screaming at me and she starts running away. And I said, wait, 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 no, no, come back, come back, come back. I'm helping, come back. So I, I, I put that in my little cap and I thought, okay, that was funny. And uh, the next day, my friend tells me, oh, my mom, she, she tells me she, she owes you an apology. And I said, what for? He said, he said, well, she said that she she was she fell asleep and she was feeling nice and warm and her back was feeling a little bit better and then she 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 got startled in this dream and she said she was in a cave and there was a man with a mustache and a top hat but he was he, his body was a spider and he was working on he, he was spinning someone in a web and she said, he said, she, she got scared and she started screaming and running away. And she just knew that it was me and she wanted to apologize. I said, she doesn't have to apologize. But let me tell you the dream that I had. Huh. Very interesting. Hmm. Does that happen often? I'm sorry, you froze one more time? Does that happen often? 
Often it does happen on occasion. Now, I, often, not all the time, but it does happen on occasion. Very interesting. So what, what abilities do you have? Did you start with one or two and then you started working on the others? Because that's usually how it does happen. Well, but it, it started with clairvoyance, but I'll, I've always been a, I've always been a manifester. I've always, I've always, I would, I would draw the things that I wanted to create them in my own world in some way mm -hmm. or another. Um, and then I just, it, it was just a natural, but you know, it, it's called folk magic. So I, I, being, being raised Pentecostal, you, you basically, it's folk magic. You just, they believe in it, even though if they don't call it magic. True. Very true. Do you offer any workshops for psychic and mediumship development? Yes, I do. Uh, you can find me at University of Magicus, and we, I teach those. I, I teach once a week, usually Saturday mornings. I am actually going to include all of your links in the end of the show, so that way everyone can get to you whatever way they need to get to you. So, well, we got to get down to New Orleans. We got to we'll stop by and say hello. Yeah, I'm delighted. So, I, 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 I do still apologize for slipping my mind about the interview today. I, I am, I'm not typically like that. I, I've just had so no, much. No, no, no. That's okay. Like That's I fun. said, we're just so grateful for you to be with us. Yeah, yeah. I was so excited to have you on the show. Yeah. Well, I I am honored, even though somewhat embarrassed at my at no. my lack of discretion. <laughs> <laughs> I I totally forgot about the time change, and my husband was the one that said it's four o'clock, and I said no, it's not, and I had to check the calendar again. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was it like growing up for you, having these abilities? Was it I mean, I, I thought, I knew that I wasn't normal per se, but I thought that I, again, I thought that it was, I, I, I had a tendency to think that I was commonplace. I thought mm -hmm. that everyone did what I did. I thought that I was just sort of down here. Mm -hmm. I thought I was just common. That's when people ask me, I say the same thing because when you're, younger you just don't even think that there's anything different you think that everyone is the same way mm -hmm. and you just kind of go along your business until you say something about oh that person or you know the lights that are exploding because of your energy or whatever and, and that has happened so many times when you get angry when i'm angry or or or, or excited or emotional mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Or, or there will be many earthquakes. The room will vibrate. Yes, it's just there's so much energy, and if you're an energy worker or mover, it's just something normal. But then it's not normal because when you finally do bring it up when you're older, everyone's like, "What are you talking about? I don't even. Why are these light bulbs smashing?" <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. yeah. So, it's a strange, strange thing. Um, someone wants to know what is the name of your shop. Well, I, I work at a at a bar and restaurant. I read tarot. It's called Apothecary, the Vampire Apothecary, here in the French Quarter. Um, I also offer readings in my own home, which is a little more personable. Um, I offer there's when you come to my home, you get tea and you get to explore and it's quiet mm -hmm. and it's it's here you know it's 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 a public setting but it's it's i i love i love where i work i love the bar i love i love it but it's it, it's if you want a more personal one come to me personally if you're okay meeting me in the public if this is a great place they have great food great drinks i seen pictures on facebook um you're showing your your place your house is beautiful i mean wow Thank you. it's like all the stings, like wow! I, I don't know where to start. You know, I I, I like to tell people that I decorate an early American funeral home, <laughs> which you know, it, it's none of it is early American because that's actually very distinctive. But 
as far as early American funeral home, it's, mm -hmm. it's quite apropos because mm -hmm. funeral homes really became a thing in the 1860s. And by the 1890s, it was a major booming industry. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about early funeral home, early American specifically funeral home. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, wow. To, you don't know where this, you know, you, I look at the picture and it's like, wow, you got a lot of stuff in there. It's just and stunning. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's wow. a lot of stuff. I sometimes think life would be easier if I were not quite as fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it, it must have taken you decades to collect all of that. Well, you know, I, I, partially, yes. Um, so some of them I I found um, in... So I, I have moved so many times. And um, in Los Angeles, I had moved and moved and moved. And then I sold down to just a few of my favorite things. And then when I lived in Pasadena, then I was able to really start collecting. And then I moved to New York and I sold some of the things that I didn't really, the things that I liked, but I, I didn't really love so much. Um, and then I, 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 I moved from New York to, to Pennsylvania and sold things. And then I moved from Pennsylvania to Long Island and sold things. And then I, while in New York, I actually was able to find a lot of things a lot of things it's yeah. so it's so beautiful i mean you don't even know where to look first it's just and it's so well put together it's i mean i'm i don't know i just i guess i don't know how to decorate well, <laughs> i'm a minimalist you know, i am I, I i i wish i could be a minimalist but i I'm, I'm really a true victorian and in the 19th century the upper echelon of society wanted to display wealth on every surface. They wanted, they, they wanted draperies and they wanted stained glass windows and verandas and rooms within rooms. And, and they wanted uh, a floral wallpapers and they wanted, they wanted expensive rugs and they wanted paintings and, and statues and bronzes and, and terracottas and vases and junk everywhere, really. <laughs> And it's not junk. Everything is just so amazing. I mean, there are so many things there that I, I can't even imagine where you found these things. It's just beautiful. So it, it has the opportunity. It's everywhere. I, I've been very lucky. A lot of things yeah. find me. Um, my my Victorian Rococo Revival sofa was a free find on Marketplace, 1860s. Wow. Um, the, one of my favorite chairs, it's it's this little 1880s little tufted number with fringe, and that was found on the on the sidewalk in Long Island. It was just out on the street. Anthony, get looking. <laughs> you got to see some of this stuff they throw out. Yeah. And yeah. then I have I have really great friends. I've been given some really lovely gifts, some really amazing pieces that they go. I don't have any room for it, and I know you know you would love it. So I, I, I haven't spent a lot of money, but it looks like I have. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of those stuff, like you say, you could find. <laughs> I know uh, I have a friend that was, a, he's retired now, but he was sanitation. And they used to find stuff, especially in, in like the richer neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They just get tired of something, they just throw it out. Yeah. And it's still good and whatever. And like antiques and stuff like that, at states, sales and stuff, and People come in, they, 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 their parents or their grandparents' estate, yes. they don't want the stuff. So they just they well, try to sell it. And when they don't, they get this throw out. I just saw uh, on, on TikTok. What, one second. I saw on TikTok there was a. Hi. There was a. On TikTok, there was a, 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 a medieval manuscript that was put in the recycling bin. Oh my gosh. 500 years old. Somebody found crazy? it in a recycling bin. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, they just toss everything out. You know? And so you don't I, know what your grandparents had from back then and, and where they had it. It might have been passed down from generation to generation. And then, and then they just toss it away. I have the most beautiful bench and chair here. 
and they're both upholstered. The bench needs to be fixed, but mm -hmm. they were both from uh, an old church, and I got them in an antique shop. Uh huh. And the bench was broken, so if you sit on it, you're going right through the floor. Uh -huh. um, but that's what I have my clients. They're going to eventually sit on that. Right now, I just use chairs, but they're both really beautiful, and they're Victorian. Um, but I, I offered them something different because it was broken and they gave it to me for that. So that does happen. That does happen. Steve, but I love uh, Stephen Dills just, um, came on. Um, and he says he misses you. Oh, hope, hope you're doing well. Miss you, man. Steve Dills. Hi, mm -hmm. Steve. Yeah. I I'd let you know. Yeah. I, I, what was that? No, I just want, I mean, I, I'm looking because I have the Facebook on, on my other monitor and I got this one. This is on YouTube. So I'm starting to see people's names. Who's who's a Facebook user on Howard? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's Steve's deals. So, yeah. I think it's because it's so early in the day. A lot of people are just starting to get out of work. So I'm just missing. going in, which I actually should be going downstairs pretty soon i'm already a little bit late if you need to that's perfectly fine we yeah. understand you to i help do us i'm so much. sorry that i was late coming in uh, no in on your show. I, no and you're welcome back anytime thank you so I, so much for well being i would be delighted just remind me the day of <laughs> <laughs> i didn't want to bother you again no i i always like i prefer to Sometimes I, I agree to something and then I, I don't I don't automatically put it in my my calendar and I forget. So you have to I'm old, so you have to remind me. Oh, that's how I feel too. Just one more question. Ron Yakovetti wanted to know if you had the chance. I think you froze on me. Oh, you're frozen for me. Um, mm. Ron wanted to know if you've been to Cape May, New Jersey. It's all Victorian and a beautiful town. You froze on me, but I'm. Gonna, I need to get going. Uh, it was lovely to, to chat with both of you. Lovely to be with you as well. Thank you so much for Thank being you. with us. You're welcome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Oh my gosh, I just love him. That that was awesome. He was very nice. Very nice guy. He's sweet. Yeah. He's such a sweetheart. Oh, Marco, you. You've been to Cape May. My family goes to Cape May for their vacations. They love it there. We started in Virginia Beach and then they moved over to Cape May. We go to Key West, however. It was a great show. He's just yeah. such a sweet, sweet man. Yeah. We had a lot of a lot of good people on today too, um, in the audience. Yeah. Questions. It was great. Um, so I'm glad people popped on. We had a nice amount of people on. I didn't think at this time of day everybody be, you know, yeah, I think it's as much. I know other people are going to watch it later. Um, 305, yeah, I definitely loved watching him on Ghost Adventures. Like I said, my favorite part was when um, he turned he turned toward Aaron <laughs> when he had the Ouija board out. And he said, oh, Godwin. That made me crack up so bad. Um, it's just. Yeah. That was, I looked them up yesterday. I would watch it. It's hysterical. That, that the thing with the. Um, it's what was it, it. It was like three three um, satanic. You know the. You know. Was it when they were at the table? And and then one Catholic. And they had to, they went back and forth, and they, you had to find out who was in the, the that show. Okay, that show. Yeah, I mean, you just just Google his name, and it'll pop up on on YouTube. And a couple of things he did was was pretty was pretty good. Yeah, you know? he was very um, like downplayed in that show. I think. Yeah, he was. He's also done. Um, he has a YouTube show called The Gentleman Psychic. He was in Scared and Alone on YouTube, um, but I, I'm telling you, you have to see that that Ghost Adventures if you haven't seen it, because mm -hmm. I think I'm going to use this word because it's it's necessary. 
Aaron almost shit his pants. <laughs> Every time I think of it, I lose it. Like, and Jay Wosley, he was doing some kind of like, I think it was kind of like witchcraft upstairs, but they were, they were in Anton LaVey's house, which is where um, Richard Lail was living. And he, I don't know if he just cranked up the drama or if he was just kind of channeling something, but it was hilarious. I don't think I've ever laughed that hard in my life when I watched a, sh a show mm -hmm. and this was supposed to be like creepy and I was not creeped out at all. It was, they were doing some kind of like seance and then they went upstairs. Oh my God, you gotta see it. It's funny. Mm -hmm. Yes, the house was stunning. The decor was amazing. If we're just going to talk about, I know Marco's pissed about us talking about the interior design, but it was amazing. So yeah, that was all his stuff too. But there was like a, I think there was like a tower that they used to use for like summoning or something. It was amazing. I mean, this house was amazing. It was I can't talk about this show enough. I know. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> it, it, it's nice that we had a little a little walk in through uh, New, New Orleans. It was pretty, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, we could see of it, yes. Yeah. I mean, it, was, it was nice. It felt like, I'm you know. Sorry. He had to run. Yeah. I mean, we're lucky to have him because he, yeah, he couldn't do it tonight because he's working and everything. And so... You got to work. Yeah. Um, and originally, we were going to have it so that it was pre recorded, but luckily, the guild allowed us to do it live so everybody can ask questions. Because I hate when, you know, we get on here and it's just pre recorded, nobody can ask questions. This was really cool. And mm -hmm. no matter how much time we had with them, this was great. Don't you think? Yeah. I did. I thought it was great. I thought it was good. Yeah. So everybody popping up, that was great. I, I, yeah, I was like surprised. Everybody, everybody came in. You know, I know a lot of people are going to watch this because this he's just so interesting and he's got such a cool background. And you know, his who he hangs out with, they're very interesting people. Like Patty Negri, she's such a sweet lady, and other session so interesting. Oh, Ron said, now we have to do another show tonight. Ron, if you want, we'll do the show from 7.30 to 9.30. You'll get so sick of our voices, you're going to want to cut us off forever. <laughs> you, you'll start listening to us through Staticom. You'll, you'll, just, you'll, you'll, you'll start listening to us through Staticom. You'll throw, the, you'll throw the Staticom on and just listen to us. Come yeah. through there. I'll get the Panda Box out. We'll get that's, this. that's Staticom 3.0. Little Our lady. Gonna come through. We could just do a last year, March, we walked around New Orleans and saw the shop he's working at now a few times. Fun City. I saw pictures of uh, Ron Yacovetti, and it is a really, really beautiful restaurant and bar. And it's, um, I don't know if I have it with me, Ron. Hold on. It's a really beautiful place. It's all like these really pretty greens. It looks very, um, it looks really, I don't know. It looks really interesting. This is the Panda Box. It's very small. It's like, it's all right, Todd Carmilla, we're going. We're going to do like the, uh, the Brady Bunch road trip. Anybody wants to go, we're going. No, we do like, uh, like the Griswolds vacation. Yeah. We'll all pack into a big green station wagon and we'll, um, you know, strap Maureen, you will strap you to the roof. You know, yeah. And then we'll just shoot down there. I'm grandma. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just get a big RV. That's all. Yeah. We shoot on down there. Station cannoli. Uh, no, Ron. Cannoli. You know, Ron, yeah. Ron, it's not like a ghost box. It's um, it does like go through the channel, like an SB7. It would go through the channels, but it's so much clearer 
I don't know. How would you explain it, Anthony? What? What you have? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. It's a little clearer going through the channels, but it's, I, I mean. It's so clear. I, I yeah, can't. It's I mean, I clear guess than go most of the boxes out there right now. The Pana Vox. I don't have a Pana Vox, Todd. I have Pana Box, which is what I just showed, but it's working unless there's well, something Pana else. Box. Are you talking Pana about the Vox, app? That's the one on the, that's the app. Yeah, I don't have that. I, I, I had that app one time too. I think I still have it somewhere on my phone. I tried to download the uh, Pan, uh, Phasma box, but I can't find it on my phone for some reason. I don't know. So, yes. Yeah, the box. so yes, it is a sweeping ghost box. Hi, Jen. Uh, I love my Pana box. It sounds like a recorder. It's so clear sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I think it's really super clear. Yeah. I mean... That's what we were using when we were at the uh, Masonic Lodge. And mm -hmm. I would use that. And Todd or, Jen, or uh, Carmela, somebody was using the Phasma box. And then I think they were using. Oh, so you were talking about Panabox. And somebody else was using the Dead Bell. And we were using, we were doing a trivia game with the spirits. And we would ask a question. And then I would say, I would yell out whatever they said the answer was on the Pana box. And then they would tell me what they responded on the Phasma box. And then you'd hear ding on the dead bell. Yeah, I, I like that dead bell. It's cool. It's really yeah. cool. I, I, I like the idea of just the bell itself, too, uh, as a trigger object. So see, I just think about getting one of those. You know, I just bring it and just put it in and listen if, if anything or, uh, you know, ring it or set that off. Now that's but those the, that dead bell is pretty cool. At I, this the first point, time I've seen that. I think I have so much stuff that if I sold it, I could use that for a down payment on the house. <laughs> you want to see what I got here? Yeah. What is it? I got I got a whole room of I got two shelves of old equipment. I got equipment on this. This is all these all my cameras on my side here. I got I, I can sell room for equipment in here. I got so much stuff. Well, then got, sell some of it. Yeah, I know. I, I, I've been thinking about that. I mean, some of the stuff I haven't used in years because it's always new, and you always want to you always wanted to get the the newest stuff. Now I'm looking back at the older stuff. I'm like, no difference. I'm going to be still using some of my old stuff. I, I don't know how many of you guys know this. Yeah, it's an old radio AM FM. Oh, the uh, oh, this is a, this is the original spirit box. The radio shack. The shack hack. I just got one of those. Oh, that's why oh, you, got, you change it. I got this from Bob Christopher. Yeah, the cat. That's pretty cool. Let me get rid of the sounds here. Might as well show off what we have. Yeah, this is the old original SP7. This before that even came out. Shack hacks. So yeah, it's it's interesting in some of these boxes that it became and the old ovalis. One of the old Avalises. This is, has a thing on it. This is the um, Avalis X. If Bobby Gallo's on, he'll probably remember this. I first, uh, Ghost Adventures had this on there. And I thought, oh, it was so cool. I can actually hear the voices of the spirits. And it, I thought I brought something in that I wanted to show you. So this is the old stuff. Some of the old equipment that we have and have. But yeah, you can't find it. Got so much stuff. And then, you know, as you go along, you always try to bring something new into it. So yeah. you try to get it some sort of trigger object or something. I have I actually have um 
um, devices, meters that actually measures the decimal sounds. I was trying to see if certain decimals of the sound, you know, um, of spirit is different than us, you know, but it didn't work. If it did work, I didn't know it. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you buy and especially when you're in construction, you, you always go to a store and go and think, hey, you know, that might work. That might work. A lot of things haven't worked, but, you know, so we're getting. So it is like show and tell, Jen. Show and tell. I'm, not gonna, I'm embarrassed to show you my room. <laughs> we got the Tempest and we, um, we've we been using it and it's been really weird. So um, at the, my husband used it when he was at the lodge and it was bringing up all Masonic words. I don't know. Was he with you at the time when he was using it? No. I don't remember he used Masonic words. Oh, he was, he was walking with Patrick. Yeah. So he was walking with Patrick and all the, this Masonic stuff was coming up. And um, I said, well, you suck because it's never worked for me. It just throws out weird stuff. And he's like, well, maybe you're just sitting at home and it's not really like connecting with anything major. And it's just tossing out words. So after that, I was like, I'm going to make this thing work for me. So I'm sitting at home by myself and I turned it on and it was saying things like, <clears throat> you are the one. And I'm like, I'm the one that what? And it said gateway. Mm. And I'm like, okay, so what am I the gateway for? And it said, um, loved ones. And I'm like, Okay, so I'm psychic, I'm a medium, whatever. And it said, let me out. And I'm like, like, like hell, I'm letting you out of anything. And it said, um, and I said, I'm turning this off now. I really am not getting into something like this. I am not letting anything out. I have no idea what it's what it is or what it wants. And I said, I'm turning you off now. And it said, don't leave. Wow. And I said, no, I'm turning you off. Nothing in this house is supposed to be here. You must leave now. I'm putting a protection over my family. And it mm. said, um, playing games with your mind. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> that's what it's doing. And the next day, Todd was with me. And I said, you need to see what this is doing saying the exact same things. He's like, put it away. You're mm -hmm. not allowed to use it while you're here by yourself. You should and I said, yeah. I'm not using it by myself. You're here with me and it's doing the same thing. Like, this is not cool. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see. Oh yeah, be right back. I just want to show them one thing. Ah. Has anybody had anything like that happen to them with equipment? where it said that it was trying to come like get out or that you had a connection or there was a, an attachment or anything like that. Mm. Todd, Todd uh, and Camelo uses a old um, Polaroid. You want to see old Polaroid? Look at this one. Oh, no. I would love to get film on this, huh? Yeah, that would be cool. One of the original ones, Todd. Yeah. I I, I found this um when I cleaned out my mother's house. Yeah, this is how it used to go. In and then you close. Uh I gotta figure out how to close it because does it work? I don't know. I don't know even how to get filmed for this. So it just pops right up. Uh, that's that was like I got like two of these. Yeah. Talking about old equipment, I could show you some stuff. They have the crank start. 
<laughs> uh, so, yeah, 305, they, they were on um, Entity, Entity Voices not too long ago. Good team. That's awesome. Yeah. I like when, when teams start to get together and they follow others. Yeah. I mean, we had a good show today. We had a bunch of good people on. And um, I just realized it's 556. Yeah, it's getting to the witching hour. No, yeah. it's not. <laughs> it's getting to the witching hour. Yeah. Uh, came out to, uh, to take it to a show. This show today was great. Nice, Thanks, fun, Bob. excellent guest. Uh, and that's Lordis under him as Facebook user. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, hell no. So, we want to. So, I think uh, we're getting to that hour. It's that we could relax. <laughs> I've been relaxed the whole time. I don't know about you. Well, I'm a real, I'm relaxed. I'm just, you know, <laughs> tired. It's been a long so, day. I think. Yeah, it's been a little crazy. Day. Sure. Can we announce who we're having next week so everybody can get get ready for it and be here? Sure, sure you, you might as well. We are going to have Scott Porter and Stephanie Burke next week. Yeah, I can't wait. I really can't. They're, they're good people. This is another a great show that we're gonna have. Yeah, yeah. yeah those them. two. Yeah, like I met Scott a year ago at the um, Gettysburg Paracon. Then I bumped into him around the other Paracons. But every year we, I was like, okay, we have to have the yearly picture because he's usually his booth is usually near mine. So I got there. Let's have our yearly picture. So it's yeah, good people, very good yeah. people. It's very, very informative. And, you know, they, they've been on shows and on TV, so people will know them. We met them at Gettysburg Bash, um, and that was the year that we had uh, Satan in the baby carriage. Oh. And, <laughs> and uh, Stephanie stopped me to pet him and he almost flipped the baby carriage over. He was only about, uh, when, okay, so that was when it was in September, right? The, the bash? Uh -huh. Or was it August? August. Back then? Well, last year was July and this year is July. I think year but it was before that it was June, before. wasn't it? Or maybe, maybe it was August. I think it was August. Possibility, yeah. So he was only maybe. about four months old, and he hated people. Mm -hmm. Every time somebody would try cool. to pet him, he would flip the baby carriage over, and he was little. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't even really look at her face. I thought it was Porter's assist. Mm -hmm. So I had to send her a message afterwards and say, oh, my God, I didn't even realize who you were, Steph. And uh, she she laughed. But I said, but I still think your shoes are fantastic because that's yeah. all I noticed at the time. Um, and then we went to uh, investigate with them after that. And we had a great time. And cool. they're like just the best people. They're like just so humble and and sweet. And I've been trying to get them on this show since and they were working on a show at the time so they couldn't they couldn't do video mm -hmm. and i said just put a mask on you then <laughs> like we'll do whatever yeah, I know. Like. so finally they're coming out too so finally agreed that was great that's great so yeah all right six o'clock all right and the bong 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 of six you want me to you want to do it do our right. thing first, or so you want okay. another fantastic episode of Dimensions of the Supernatural? I'm Maureen Grudzinski of A Little Witchy. 
This is my great co-host, Anthony Simonelli, uh, Mr. Forget About It. And again, Richard, Lael, Lillard, fantastic guest. Anthony, take it. I, I just want to say, be safe out there. You want to look for ghosts, you don't want to be a ghost. I'm going to say good night. Ciao, familiar. So, here we're going to go. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Take care, all. <laughs> Good night.